Hello, this episode I'm making pan fried chicken with crispy potatoes, lemon and garlic infused grilled zucchini and homemade olive oil aioli with capers and parsley. Many of you have written to me saying you cook along with me so I thought this time I'd do something a little different and film in real time so that if you're a little unsure in the kitchen you can see how long I take to do each step and um, even if you're not unsure, even if you're really confident in the kitchen, uh, it might, sometimes it's nice just to have a bit of company. Chicken is such a basic dish in most countries, but I get a lot of friends who come over and they love my chicken and they say, how come when I cook chicken, it's rubbery and tasteless and, and yours is golden and juicy? So I'm going to share some tips to help you with that if that is a problem for you. Okay, so I begin by taking my chicken out of the fridge. Of course, you don't want to leave chicken out longer than 15 minutes, but you never want to cook with cold meat as this will prevent it from cooking evenly and browning nicely. Uh, I preheat the grill of the oven and take 500 grams of zucchinis. Zucchinis cost 1.5 euro a kilo, so they came in at 75 centesimi. I might put the American dollar conversion on the screen only because I know that the majority of this community is American. I cut lengthways and then chop on a little diagonal. <laughs> Then you get some baking paper. I often reuse my baking paper, so this is one I had folded up. The key to cooking things quickly when you're in a rush is to make sure all your vegetables are spread out and not on top of each other. This also ensures that they don't sweat each other and instead they form nice grilled edges. Take a lemon and roll it on the bench to soften it so that it makes it easier to juice. And now I'm just going to use the juice from half the lemon uh, for my aioli later on. So just put it in a little cup. And then I'm going to chop the whole lemon into thick slices to infuse the zucchini with the scent of lemon while it's grilling. Lemons were uh, €2.50 a kilo, and this is a 120 gram lemon, so it came to 30 centesimi. Now I'm taking a clove of garlic, which was about 7 grams, and at €7.12 a kilo, it came in at 4 centesimi. Just roughly chop this and spread it out around the tray as the aroma will flavor the zucchini while they are grilling. Drizzle a little olive oil over the whole pan. As many of you know, Guido's family makes olive oil here on the property where we live just outside of Florence. But if you buy extra virgin olive oil in bulk in a big tin here in Italy, the cheapest price is €4.86. And for the aioli and oiling the vegetables and chicken, I used a total of 200 mils, so it comes to 97 centesimi. A generous pinch of sea salt. Salt is so cheap, so the total used now and later for the whole recipe came in at one centesimo. I stopped to film a close-up every now and then, but I cut these bits out so that I could keep the actual cooking time on screen uh, consistent with what you'll be doing. Now, the zucchini are under the grill, so we can start peeling and chopping the potatoes. 
Normally I do oven roasted potatoes, but if you're in a rush, I find you can dice potatoes into small cubes and pan fry them in a little olive oil. Actually, these potatoes are from the vegetable garden here on the farm, as uh, were the zucchini. Uh, the lemon is from a lemon tree. The olive oil is produced here on the farm. Um, my greengrocer, she always throws in parsley and basil uh, for free, which is something I've actually found all my greengrocers in Italy have always done. And then the egg is from the chickens in the chicken pen here on the farm. So in reality, this meal would normally cost us uh, one euro 65 per person. It may seem completely obvious, but I know a lot of you are students and or you're still living at home and so you're just about to start uh, planning your own groceries. The way I've always been able to budget and afford to live alone for so many years uh, in Italy and other countries is because I buy certain staples in bulk like oil or chicken that I'll freeze so that they're cheaper per kilo. If you've just moved to Italy, don't accept the first price you see. Try different supermarkets and make a trip a little further out of the center because, for example, with chicken breast, the price varied uh, quite a bit by about four or five euro. For the weight of 400 grams uh, for two chicken breasts, I paid about three euro. <laughs> Potatoes would be 91 centesimi a kilo, and I'm using 400 grams, so that comes in at 36 centesimi. I know potatoes are high carb, but generally I find if you're someone like me who struggles with resisting dessert, you can go for the lean option of just chicken and zucchini, but then if you're still hungry, uh, you'll end up going for something else afterwards, after dinner, that is high carb and high sugar. So sometimes it's better to just go for a hearty dinner and make sure that you're filling up on something that's wholesome. Forgive me uh, if you are a seasoned budget grocery shopper. Uh, this doesn't apply to you. I know there are a lot of young people who watch my channel who are potentially just uh, entering this whole world of grocery shopping and living on a budget for the first time. And I would say ignore all the prices and try and train yourself to look straight at the cost per kilo. That's the only way that you can really uh, compare each product and work out where the value for money lies uh, and not get distracted by all the packaging and the merchandising. You want to find the heaviest frying pan you have in order to cook these quickly without having to stand over them. We want all the potatoes to be touching the hot surface. A little olive oil. Let's go through some of the things that you might be doing uh, which could be preventing you from having perfectly cooked chicken. Perhaps you're, as I said, using chicken cold straight from the fridge. You want to just uh, bring it out a little bit before you start cooking so you're not putting cold meat onto a hot pan. Uh, you want to make sure it's an even thickness. You want to make sure you're not overcooking it. So just uh, follow my instructions in a bit when we put it in the pan. Uh, not salting it before it goes into the pan, you definitely want to do that. Moving it around the pan and destroying the possibility of the Maillard reaction, which is where you get that, that golden sort of uh, effect on, on meat. I know sometimes it feels like you want to keep moving around the pan and make sure it doesn't burn, but honestly, trust me, once the chicken hits that pan, it needs to stay in that one spot to create the crispy golden effect and be turned only once. Chicken should be turned only once. Another thing people sometimes do is wash chicken and you need it to be really dry before putting it in the pans. So you really want to pat the chicken breast down with paper towel so that uh, before you season it, so that then uh, when it goes into the pan, it is is dry. Un po' di sale marino, a little sea salt. And I put the potatoes on a high heat and really just leave them without stirring too much so they form crispy edges. Okay, now I'm preparing the aioli. You want to separate the egg yolk from the white. Uh, we're just using the yolk. You could save that white for scrambled eggs for breakfast. At 1 euro 19, uh, for a carton of six eggs, one egg cost uh, about 19 centesimi. I 
like to add a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, which cost about four centesimi. Just whisk that in with the egg yolk. And then very slowly drizzle in the olive oil while whisking. If you become impatient and pour too quickly, it will split and you won't form that creamy, thick mayonnaise texture. So just keep pouring the tiniest drizzle. Um, if you're whisking and pouring alone like me, put a tea towel under your bowl to stop it from sliding. I actually made this aioli twice so that I could film you a close-up version as well so you could really see the transformation. Uh, it took me a total of 3 minutes and 15 seconds to make this aioli, so why would you buy store-bought mayonnaise with all its preservatives and colours and who knows what else when you could have a natural version of mayonnaise, uh, homemade, uh, you know everything that's gone into it and it just takes 3 minutes to make. Aioli is a very Mediterranean sauce, traditionally made with garlic, egg yolk and olive oil. I left my mortar and pestle down on the farm so I won't be able to crush up the garlic, but uh, in any case I thought I'd include this because if you're not confident about cooking chicken or fish and the result tends to be a bit dry, uh, serving it with aioli is a great way to save the dish and guarantee that you'll have moisture and flavour. We always made this when I was growing up. Don't forget to stir the potatoes so they cook on the other side and I think our zucchini could be flipped over as well. Generally I prefer oven roasting for vegetables but I'm using the grill because it's faster than the oven and in this case zucchini uh, are not a really dense vegetable so they work well under the grill. Okay, now we can add the juice of half the lemon that we squeezed earlier. Just check on your potatoes. Italian cuisine often uh, uses capers and I think they work really well with the aioli so just add a tablespoon of capers which came to 18 centesimi for a jar that was 1 euro 63. Now let's move on to the chicken. Perhaps you're someone who is paranoid about having raw chicken inside and while it's certainly good to have a steak medium rare, chicken must be cooked all the way through. So to do this, you really want to make sure that it's even, an even thickness all the way around. Grab a, a mallet or a rolling pin or just a can of lentils and sort of bash your chicken so that it is even uh, on, on every side. I season it on both sides with a little sea salt and pepper. 
Peppa came to three centesimi. If you're not using a salt shaker, I find putting salt in my hand gives me more control in sprinkling it evenly over the chicken. Don't forget to wash your hands with soap and water before grabbing the pepper after you've touched the chicken. Now at this point my potatoes are done, so in theory you could use the same pan if you only have one big frying pan. I can't stress how important it is to invest in a good heavy frying pan that distributes the heat evenly and gets nice and hot. I would say it's even more important than it being non-stick. Just add a little oil to the pan you're using for the chicken. I suppose you could drizzle it directly on the chicken, but this is how I do it. And put that on high heat to warm up. The zucchini should be done, so take them out from under the grill. You could eat the lemon and garlic if they're well cooked, and we certainly do, but the main purpose of putting them on there was just to flavor the zucchini. And now we want to ensure that the pan is really lovely and hot to seal in all the juices the moment the chicken hits the pan. So just wait and maybe put a little potato cube in to test. If it doesn't sizzle, then keep waiting. That's what it should sound like. Now, don't prod or move it around the pan. Just leave the chicken now for about four to five minutes. I put the pepper on the other side once uh, the chicken breasts are in the pan. Uh, and we, meanwhile, will get on with just clearing the workspace, get rid of the paper that has the chicken on it. I used paper from the butcher that the chicken came in, but uh, if you buy yours from the supermarket, you could put it between some paper towel and then put it in a plastic recyclable grocery bag. Um, you know, I always find one or two of them has a hole in it, so it's a good way to use them. Season your aioli with a little salt and pepper. Check that your head is in the frame. <laughs> now, just taste your aioli to check that the balance of flavors is right. Sometimes I add a little natural yogurt, sometimes more lemon, sometimes more salt. Remember to clean up as you go so you don't have a mess at the end and you can start preparing to plate up. These are quite generous portions uh, because Guido eats so much. So uh, find the biggest plates you have, or I suppose this would also probably serve three people. I think the loveliest gift you can give someone when they walk through the door after a long day, whether it's a roommate or a friend coming over for dinner or your mother or a partner, is, is to not only smell the aroma of her home-cooked meal, but also to not be confronted by a kitchen that looks like a disaster zone with dirty dishes and food scraps everywhere. Uh, it's not easy. I'm, I'm actually quite messy by nature. And then if you have children, I'd say, well, well done for even finding the energy to feed everyone, let alone trying to make it nutritious or cost-effective or having a tidy kitchen. 
I'm often cooking after having worked uh, until 4 a.m. the night before. I try to get up early for a run before breakfast, so by sunset I'm usually starving. But I will say, having aesthetically pleasing surroundings calms me so much. Uh, so I really do it probably even more for myself than for the loved one <laughs> for whom I'm preparing a meal. Okay, finally we're ready to turn the chicken, so let me move the camera. And you see they're lovely and golden. Uh, they're not swimming in oil or butter, but they're not sticking to the pan either. If you try to flip chicken too early, it often hasn't formed a strong enough crust, so it will seem like it's sticking and you might freak out, but just wait and you'll find that once it's gone crispy, it pulls away easily from the pan. And there are our potatoes done. And again, they weren't shallow fried in oil. They were just lightly coated in olive oil. Uh, but because they're small cubes, they, they cooked evenly. I always like to top dishes with fresh herbs to cut through the richness. So I'm chopping some parsley, which came to five centesimi, but Actually, in green grocers in Italy, I found they often throw in a small bunch of basil or parsley for free. Uh, my female green grocer did uh, this on this occasion. So the total cost of all these ingredients for two very big portions for two people was 5.92 divided by two comes to two euro and 92 centesimi per person. I guess this would be a compromise meal because it's making something with slightly gourmet ingredients like capers, fresh herbs, a homemade sauce, but trying to keep to a budget so that you're spending at least a quarter of what you pay in a restaurant. We're including protein and vegetables for energy and nutrition, but also adding roast potatoes to make it really filling and add a bit of comfort food. This could be more finely chopped, but let's just say it's rustic home cooking, so it's a little rough. Now the second side of the chicken took about three minutes and I'm turning it off but just leaving the chicken to rest. If we were to cut into it straight away now, all the juices would escape. So we just want to leave it to rest for a bit. And meanwhile, we can plate up the zucchini, discarding the lemon and garlic or eating it if it's cooked through. Sorry, it's not very uh, nice presentation, but uh, it's sort of just a rustic home-cooked meal that you uh, sort of might find in a trattoria. If you want, you can wait to see uh, what Guido thinks when he comes home. Uh, I'll put that at the end. Um, you know, in, in Tuscany, or actually in all of Italy, uh, Italians eat uh, chicken and roasted potatoes quite a lot. You don't think of it as a really Italian uh, dish, but it is uh, on most menus in a, in a trattoria, when, well, at least I found when I lived in Rome and, and here in Tuscany. And uh, the only thing that, that isn't uh, sort of strictly Italian is the aioli. But um, yeah, this is for, for me just a, a meal that will really fill you up. It will nourish you. It's sort of comfort food with the potatoes, uh, but it's got protein in there to give you lots of energy. So I hope it nourishes you or your loved ones. And uh, just let me know in the comments if you uh, have different uh, dietary preferences or you would like me to make it cheaper. Would you like me to go vegetarian? Would you like me to show you uh, some ideas for, for how to cater for a dinner party on a budget? Um, anything you like, just let me know in the comments and you know I read them. 
And I'd like to say a big thank you, as always, to those who support this channel on Patreon.com. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you next Friday. And now, let's get ready for Guido. Oh. <laughs> You're not in focus. <laughs> Ciao, my love. Nonna, I wasn't sure about being at your body. Did we make a place? Don't we? No, I'm going to have a little bit. A little bit. Okay. I'm going to make some little bit. I'm going Eccolo! Vai, vai! Coming out? What is this? It oh, is, wow! It's um, pan fried chicken with aioli, roasted potatoes, and grilled skin. Looks delicious. Mmm! Bravo. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Come hai fatto l'olio lì? È buonissimo. Sì. Mm? Con le uova, l'olio. Buono, buono, buono. Mm. Sono andata con tua madre a prendere le patate. Ah sì? Sì, dall'osta. Sì, e quindi... Mannaggia! <ride> No, no. Ah, ok, abbiamo l'audio. Eh sì.